My brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set a seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel this morning is the continuation of chapter 6 of John's account, which we heard last Friday when he gathered with that group of people. They marked specifically the number of men that were there, 5,000, but undoubtedly there were more than just the men that were there. It would be much the custom to use that, that as a symbol for the group. As you recall, they were in need of food, and the Lord used it as an opportunity to give them a sign, a sign with the hopes that they would recognize way beyond the fact of being fed another type of hunger. And so they all were fed from the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes. And the gospel picks up today, the next day, when the same group of people who were there are looking for Jesus again, only to find that he has somehow disappeared. And when they do, they do finally find him at the other side of the sea at Capernaum, uh, Jesus is quick to understand that the, why they're there is because they're looking for another free meal. They have missed the point of what the sign was. They didn't recognize the ramifications of what he was suggesting by this. And so it is at this point in John's account that he begins this kind of lengthy dialogue and then turn monologue on the part of Jesus with regard to the question of the bread of life and that there must be, in fact, for the believer, a recognition of the need for God, a hunger for God, and the recognition that it's not just the physical food that sustains us, but the word of God that is the bread of life. And as we continue to find, as the gospel continues, of course, this became more and more difficult for people to comprehend or accept. There has to be faith, much the same as he suggests in the gospel today, faith in the fact that the work of God is in the one who was sent, and the one who was sent is Jesus. It is so much of a case that we find down the road in the gospel account that not only did a number of people walk away having heard Jesus speak about the need to eat of his bread and eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, that even the disciples began to kind of quiver to the point that Jesus point blank says to them, are you going to leave me too? Uh, do you recognize what we're asking and what you should be about? And it's at that point again, fortunately, there's another confession of faith on the part of the apostles where he suggests to them, Lord, we don't have any other place to go. We're going to stay with you. But even though that's the case, of course, even there you see the reaction is not totally of the most pure nature of how you should respond to God. They don't have any place to go, so they'll stay, much the same as the other ones will look for food. It's kind of a long process sometimes for us as individuals to move beyond our own personal uh, idiosyncrasies and needs and our priorities to an understanding of the priorities and the vision and the gifts that God gives. Today again, as we see, I have gathered this table to be nourished by this Eucharist, let's be mindful of the gift that is given us so freely each day and recognize as well that the gift we receive here must somehow so change and transform our lives that we in turn share in various forms that gift with those around us.